I'm Jacob Fair with the Grand Prairie Public Library, and I'm here today to take you step by step through painting a video game masterpiece. I've run this program before in the library where I led a group of people through painting their own video game masterpiece, and I'm happy to present it here as well. Now, the painting we'll be doing today is one of my favorites, a painting inspired by the classic video game series Super Mario Kart. And this is what the finished painting will roughly look like. Now, to participate and paint this painting, you'll need a few supplies. Some basic brushes. I will be using a painter's knife for one step, but it's optional. A high quality palette for your paints. An assortment of acrylic paints. And you'll need the stencils for the images. I've provided two files for the stencils images on the Children's Activities page on our website at gppl.ca. There is a PDF file that you can print out yourself on a regular printer and cut out. I've also provided a PNG image file that you can use with a Cricut device to cut out the stencils a little bit easier. Now, I should warn you that the PNG file for the Cricut devices is provided on an as-is basis. Neither I nor anyone else at the Grand Prairie Public Library can provide technical support for using it with your Cricut device, but it is there as an option. With that, I'm going to switch my camera so it focuses more on the canvas, and then I'll start this painting. Okay, my canvas is set up and I'm ready to start. Before I go any further, I should note, because I forgot to before, that I'm using an 11 by 14 inch canvas. You can, of course, use whatever size canvas you'd like, but the stencils are scaled for an 11 by 14 canvas. Now, I'm going to start with some blue paint I put on my palette, and using my big brush, well, roughly a three quarter inch brush, I guess, I'm going to apply it to the canvas using small crisscross strokes. These crisscross strokes will allow me to apply the paint fairly quickly while still giving it an interesting texture at the end. Okay, now I'm going to apply paint to the edges of my canvas. This is another optional step, but it'll make the canvas look a little more complete if you're hanging it on a wall without framing it. And there, I've covered about three quarters to four-fifths of the paint with the blue background for our sky, and that should be good enough for now. I'm going to let this layer of paint dry before I proceed, and I'm going to clean my brush, and I'll add some white paint to my canvas, and then I'll carry on from there in a few moments. Now that the layer of blue paint is dried, I'm ready to carry on. I've added some white paint to my canvas, and I'm going to be using it to paint a couple clouds in the sky. Now, as Bob Ross would say, these are happy little clouds. They can go anywhere they want, and it's your world here, so paint them wherever you'd like. I'm dipping a corner of my brush into the white paint, and I'm going to draw small circles and sort of drag the brush along the canvas to make the base shape of my clouds. Maybe something like that, and another one over here maybe. Maybe it'll go right off the top of the canvas. Yeah, I think we'll leave it like that with those two clouds. The clouds aren't entirely dry, but I won't be painting over them directly at any point in the near future, so I'm going to carry on. I'm going to paint some mountains in the background of this painting, just big mountains that happen to be part of the landscape. And for that, I'm going to be using the paint knife. I'm going to use the paint knife because it'll make the mountains look a little craggier, give me a straighter line, I won't have errant bristles making weird shapes on the side of the mountain. So I'll get a little bit of black paint on my paint knife. So I don't need quite that much. And decide where my mountain's going to live, maybe over here. And I'm just going to press it onto the canvas and start dragging into the shape of a mountain. Okay, that's one slope, I guess. Maybe it'll slope down and have a longer slope going down this way. Okay. 
And once the angle parts of the mountains are done, I'm just pulling black paint down into the center of them to sort of fill them. I'm using the knife for it quickly, but I'll be switching to a brush momentarily. And continuing my mountain along the edge of the painting so it doesn't look so unfinished at the end. And I'll just use my clean dry brush to pull the black paint down a little bit. Just to smooth out these rough patches. It doesn't really matter where the mountain bottom is. We'll be covering this up in a few minutes anyway. Now, before the black paint is dry, I want to add a bit of snow to the mountain. So while it's still wet, I'm going to use the paint knife again with some white paint. Again, just a little roll on it, a very small amount actually. I'm just going to make it follow the mountain. Just barely touch it on. A little more white paint. Same thing, just barely touching the canvas. There we go, that should do it. Maybe a little more here. Just sort of give an idea that there's definitely a snowy slope to this mountain on one side. Maybe that side doesn't see quite as much sun. And with that, I'm going to let the clouds and mountains dry for a bit because I will need them dry for the next step. And in the meantime, I'll clean my brush and knife. Now that the mountains have dried enough, it's time for the next step. Now, I've already pre-mixed some gray paint on my canvas and I put some green paint on there as well. And we're going to paint the road surface and the grass at the side of the road. For this part, I recommend folding over an old piece of paper, scrap paper, whatever you've got handy, and using that as a straight edge for the top of the road, where it crests and heads down a hill the other side. So I'm going to need my paper, and my brush, and my paint. We'll start with the gray part of the road in the center. And I'll decide where I want the crest of my road to be. My example painting, I had it a little high. I'd suggest putting it about maybe a third of the way up your painting, maybe a quarter, something like that. That'll be the crust of your road. And I'm going to paint from the paper onto the canvas so I get a nice, straight, clean edge. And then I'm just sort of going to freehand draw the boundary of that road down to the bottom of the painting, to the bottom edge. And then I'll fill in the center with gray paint but notice that I'm leaving the paper in place. That's because I'll also want that guide for my green paint momentarily. Okay, I took a quick moment there to wash my brush, and I should mention something I neglected to mention before. Whenever you're using stencils or a straight edge piece of paper like this, make sure that the paint on your canvas is completely dry, otherwise it'll stick. And the other tip I've got for you here is that it's much, much easier to do with stencils and straight edges of paper like this if you have them lying down on a flat surface like a table. I'm keeping mine up on the easel to make it easier to record in this video, but at home, if you're following along, I strongly suggest take the painting down, take care of the stencil or straight edge on a table, and then pop it back up on the easel for the next step. You'll thank yourself later. And with that, I'm going into the green paint now to paint the edges of this road surface. And same thing, from the edge of the paper onto the canvas, and I'll just be freehanding this. And it's okay if the green bleeds over onto the gray just a little bit. I don't know what the landscaping quality is like in the Mushroom Kingdom. They certainly have some out of control plants there, as you'll know if you've ever seen my piranha plant painting. I don't believe I've recorded it to YouTube yet, it may happen in the future. And I'm just going to move this along to continue using that straight edge. This piece of paper wasn't quite big enough for my canvas. And I may end up doing a second coat of green afterwards because this green isn't quite as opaque as I'd like over top of the black of the mountain and the blue of the sky. So I may end up doing a second layer of green paint. That's okay. And I'd be much better off doing two thin layers and letting it dry in between than trying to glob on an overly thick layer to get the coverage I want.
So that's enough green for the moment. I'm going to let it dry and then I'll put a little more green paint on to touch up the areas it's showing through at the moment. Okay, I think the green paint is dry enough for me to add some more. And again, this is just to make things a little more opaque. Make it so there's less of the black of the mountain showing through. And less of the white showing through at the bottom. This green paint isn't as opaque as I'd like overall. But that's okay. This will fill things in nicely. The second light coat. That's a little better. A little more green paint on the bottom here. And again, I'm trying to do a very, very light, even coat so that it'll dry fairly quickly and allow me to move on to the next step. That's the thing that takes the most time with these paintings, allowing the different layers to dry. It certainly isn't like Bob Ross's oil paintings where you can paint the whole thing in a half hour, but it's because he can continue on without waiting for the different layers to dry. Try not to forget the edges. And there, that looks a little better. Now I'll wait and let this layer of green paint dry and then I will continue on to the next step. In the meantime, I'm going to wash this brush because I'm all done with the green paint. Okay, now that that second layer of green paint is dried, it's time to move on. And it's time to start using the actual stencils. As I mentioned a moment ago, please make sure your existing paint layers are perfectly dry before you start on with the stencils. And we're going to be using two stencils, though not in the way you might think. I'm going to use the item box stencil and the pipe stencil, but I'm going to use them to apply a quick layer of white paint as a base. And that's just to make sure that the end image is nice and vibrantly colored and that it's not tinted by the colors behind it on the canvas. So I'm going to use the pipe stencil twice, once on each side of the painting, and the same with the item block. One roughly here overlapping the mountain in the background and one over here overlapping the sky. Now in the previous version of the painting I did, I pre-painted a white diamond behind the item box so that the question mark would appear as white in both of them. I think it would make kind of a neat effect to have it appear as black behind one and blue behind the other, so I'm not going to do that this time out. So for now, I have my two stencils, I have some white paint on my palette, and I'm going to do this. So I'll place the item block stencil where I'd like it to end up, roughly here. It should be floating slightly above the road surface. And then I'm just going to apply a very, very light coat of white paint. And this is basically just serving as a primer coat for the purple I'll be putting over top of it later. So I don't have to worry about getting really, really, really solid opaque coverage yet. Okay, that should be okay for the first one. Not bad. A little bit of bleed, but that's okay. And the second one will be over here somewhere. That should be okay for the second one. Now, as it happens, the stencil sheet has two copies of the item box stencil and the pipe stencil. So I'll use one copy here for both instances of the white background and then I'll use a clean new one for the second coat of paint and I'll do the same with the pipes. And I'm going to put one pipe over here. It should be, the base of it should be on the grass somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. Maybe there, that looks okay. Ah, maybe a little lower. And again, I'm painting from the edge of the stencil in towards the center. That way I get a nice clean edge on it and I can let the stencil do the work rather than me trying to do any finicky painting. Okay, that'll do for the first pipe. Then I'll reposition it over on the other side to do the second one. And I want them to roughly be even if I can. Something like that, I hope. And I'll paint the second one. And there we go, I'll let that layer of paint dry and wash my brush and I'll continue on after that. Okay, if you applied your coat of white paint as lightly as I did, it should be dry fairly quickly and in fact, mine's nice and dry. Now I'm going to use the stencil again, the second copy of it, 
to paint the item boxes purple and the pipes green. Now I'm going with a shade of green for the pipes that isn't strictly accurate from the Mario games, but I wanted to have a nice color contrast between the green of the pipes and the green of the grass. So I'll line my stencil up over the top of the white paint I put on already. And again, painting from the edges, I'll apply this new green paint over top of the white. And again, I'm painting from the edges to the center. I'm letting the stencil do the hard work for me. Okay. Well, that turned out not bad. And I'll use the stencil on the other side. Now, the number of times you can reuse the same stencil will vary to a large extent based on what type of material you print it on. I use cardstock here at the library because it's just a little bit stiffer and seems to work better for my purposes. If you're using plain printer paper at home, you may only be able to use a stencil once. So you may have to print it a second time, unfortunately. And there we go, the pipes are done. I'll clean my brush quickly and then I'll go in with the purple paint over top of the item boxes. Okay, now that my brush is clean and dry, I'm going to add some purple paint to the item blocks. Okay, it's globbing just a little bit, running some. This purple paint, I think I may have left it too long since it's the last use. I tried to mix it up, but it's still fairly watery, which leads me to think that maybe I didn't mix it up as well as I could have. Oh, it'll still be okay. And I'd rather not do an extra layer over top of these already. Well, there we go. There are item blocks. I'll let those dry for just a minute, and then I'll do my final stencils of the carts themselves. Okay, I didn't wait for the paint the purple paint to dry perfectly just because the final stencils won't be overlapping those item blocks. If you're positioning your cars in a way that they will overlap the item blocks to some extent, then certainly wait for the purple paint to finish drying before you move on. Now, I'm going to use my final stencils for the race cars. And in this case, I can position them just side by side. And again, this is partly because I'm not going to have them overlap the purple item blocks. You can, of course, position them however you'd like. They don't have to be right side by side. One car can be leading the other by a little bit more. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you. It's your painting. Now, I'm going to be doing this stencil slightly different from the last ones because I'm not going to be using the same color through the whole stencil. I'm going to use red paint on my brush and paint this middle section just with a couple up and down strokes. And then I'm going to use black paint on the same brush to take care of the tires on the outside of the stencil. It's a fairly quick and easy way to make it look a little more like an actual race car with different colored tires than body, but also a very economical use of the stencil. So I didn't have to produce multiple different stencils, just have the tires on a separate stencil from the rest of the car. So I'll start with the red paint here. Okay, that's enough for that car. We'll do the same for the other one. And I'm going to quickly wash my brush and continue with the black paint to do the tires. Now that my brush is clean, I'm going to continue with the black paint. And that's one car done. And that's the second car done. Pardon me, folks. I realized in the process of packing everything up that I forgot one aspect of this painting. I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. I forgot to draw the top of the pipes where the opening is, where the piranha plants could come out. So I just freehand those. And all I want is a small, small dab of black paint, just sort of indicate where that opening would be. A little circular motion. And that should do it. Now I'll cut back to my regularly recorded.
closing. Thank you. And there you have it. Our video game masterpiece is complete.